Hey, what's up YouTube? Just wanted to give a quick update on my uh, solar ammo box generator. Laid out some parts here and I'll quickly go over what's, uh, what's different. Um, I have a diagram that I have posted um, and that I'll include as well in the comments so you can take a look at this. Um, what I had in here before was a lead acid battery with this SunSaver charge controller down here. Uh, great charge controller, no issues with it, but uh, you can't use this with a uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. So two things that I've changed, uh, swapped out the battery, got rid of the lead acid, went with this um, lithium iron phosphate battery, and then also changed out the charge controller that supports a lithium iron phosphate battery. So been working with uh, Biono Power, uh, a gentleman by the name of Kevin, he's been great. Asked him a million questions about the, you know, the battery technology and how it varies, and I'll get into that in a little bit. And there's a lot of information uh, on YouTube if you're interested in learning more about lithium iron phosphate. So uh, this charge controller uh, supports lead acid batteries, as you know, sealed, gelled, all the, you know, um, different types that are out there. So. Took that out, um, saved some weight on that. Uh, this charge controller is um, marine grade, very lightweight, and it fits perfectly inside this box. Um, so why would I do this and bother uh, with any of these changes? So two key areas uh, that I want to talk about. Um, this battery is significantly lighter than the lead acid battery, so we're talking seven and a half pounds uh, for the uh, AGM battery that I had in there versus three and a half pounds uh, with the same uh, 12 amp hour, 12 volt battery. Uh, it's just night and day when you lift up this box compared to having a uh, the lead acid battery in it. Uh, so what do we gain besides weight? Well, if you're not familiar with um, these batteries, the um, depth of discharge for lead acid, uh, it's recommended you don't exceed 50% depth of discharge uh, because then you'll dramatically reduce the useful cycles on that battery uh, and can damage some of them. With these batteries, you can go down to 80% depth of discharge without any damage and do you know, 2,000 to 3,000 cycles uh, at 80%, and that's significant. So if you're looking at total wattage, right, so... Uh, 12 volts times, you know, the 80% versus 50, you're looking at 115 watts usable power with the lithium iron phosphate battery versus 72 watts of usable power uh, just by switching out the battery, uh, which I think is significant, especially when you're talking, um, you know, when you're talking about uh, usability and, you know, recharging and everything else uh, and overall capacity. Uh, it's very, very significant. Um, the other thing that I love about it is that the battery maintenance on this is zero, right? Well, to be fair, right, so with the, um, the AGM battery I had in there, there is no maintenance on it, but um, when you think about just lead acid in general, a lot of them do require maintenance. Um, your, the discharge rate uh, when you store them is greater versus these guys hold their uh, they're charged significantly longer, uh, and again, the manufacturer specifies uh, for each one of these batteries, you know, what they can do and how long they'll hold their charge. I've charged these things for months, checked them, and the voltage doesn't even drop at all uh, sitting on a shelf. The battery itself has a lot of intelligence in it. It has a built-in, um, what they call a BMS, battery management system. And essentially what it does is it's telling, reporting back to um, the charger, or you know, in this place, the charge controller here, um, that the, uh, the battery is at uh, a full state of charge, so it no longer needs um, the, uh, the, the current or voltage that is required and cuts it off and tells it to go into standby. Uh, that's, you know, based on my own research and talking uh, with Kevin about that, uh, about the batteries, uh, that, you know, he was just saying, hey, look, you, you know, use the battery, just don't use 
you know, their standard lead acid uh, charge controllers. You've got to get one that pairs up. They had one. Um, I considered buying it, but the problem was it wasn't going to fit inside of this, uh, this form factor. So uh, ended up going with the Jenison uh, charge controller. You can, you know, Google that, and I'll, um, I'll post uh, links to uh, all the information there so you can, uh, you can go to their website, take a look at the controller, um, the other thing you'll notice too about this controller is there's only um, the panel input and then the battery out and there's no load. So I had to wire this a little bit differently. Just had to wire the loads directly off of the uh, positive and negatives of the battery. Uh, just a little bit different than what I had before versus, you know, when you look at this controller here, uh, it has its own, uh, you know, solar input battery and then the load uh, so you can wire up your loads off of this one. So um, let's take a step back here um, and uh, talk about the, you know, we've talked about the battery. haven't really talked so much about the controller besides the difference it doesn't have. You know, it does match up with uh, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, it is a 10 and a half amp output on this. It is also, and it's in... <laughs> It's in, I'm trying to get the glare of the lights, guys. Sorry about that. Um, it is a, and I'll try to focus there, it's an MPPP, MPPT charge controller. So great for, um, you know, again, there, you hear a lot of discussions about, you know, especially you're talking about something that's this low um, wattage. I have this paired up with a 50 watt panel. Well, I see. Uh, that much of difference in performance, yeah, I may or may not, but again, it, you know, cloudy days and where you're located, and there's all these great benefactors uh, with MPPT, but again, it wasn't that, you know, I, I said, hey, I, I want to get this in MPPT, this is how it came, it just was a, a side benefit, so if I do want to increase uh, my wattage and uh, charge this battery quicker, I can do that, and that, um, that controller will take advantage of that algorithm. The um, other thing that's note, uh, if I, in case I haven't mentioned it already, this controller is significantly lighter compared to uh, this controller. Uh, so if you pair that up with this battery, it lightens this unit quite a bit. Uh, what I do plan on doing is based on everyone's feedback, which by the way, I uh, love all the discussions and appreciate all the comments and got a lot of good feedback on what we could, uh, you know, how I could change this out and uh, do some different configurations. I am working on that. I, I got a different ammo box. If you look at this one, you know, it is tapered. Uh, so this is wider than the bottom. The base gets narrower. Uh, it's, it, I didn't really notice that at first, but now when I want to change some of these configurations around, um, it's impacting it, so I've got a different box, and I'll get to that on another video. So we talked about what I've changed, the pros uh, of going this route. So let's talk about the negatives. Um, not everything is perfect. <laughs> uh, I have run into a couple of challenges with this configuration. Now, first off, the battery is uh, four times the cost of a regular AGM battery. Uh, with the, con uh, I bought it with the uh, charger, the battery charger that goes, that's paired up with the battery. It is around $130. So you got to weigh out your, you know, okay, weight and, you know, greater capacity versus, you know, if I doubled the capacity to get, uh, you know, two batteries, now you're doubling the weight versus, you know, on the AGM side. It, it, you can go back and forth, but there's just trade-offs, and I wanted to make sure uh, I mentioned that. This controller was not cheap. Uh, it was not the easiest thing to find. Uh, you have to make sure that you look at, um, you know, what's the output to the battery to match up what the manufacturer suggests, you know, for their battery as far as, you know, constant current and constant voltage, which I did, and I verified uh, with Kevin uh, before I bought this. The, um, the main issue that I ran into, and I totally deserve it, and I've gotten lots of feedback, if you notice, you know, there's my output, and then the other side of this is my switch and my, um, um, my breaker for, uh, you know, the 
uh, battery going to the battery and feeding off the switch is I don't have a voltmeter. And on this controller, I had, you know, simple state of charge, you know, full, you know, halfway and then uh, fully discharged. And I could always take a look at that and get a quick glance of uh, what was going on there. What happened was, is I had this thing fully charged, was testing it and ran it for days, you know, charging phones and uh, various loads off of here just to drain the battery down and was, you know, thoroughly impressed with how much uh, longer, you know, that 80% depth of discharge really was noticeable. Um, but what happened was, is I plugged in a couple of tablets to charge overnight and I came back and the BMS cut itself off and said, hey, you know, you were 80%, shut the power off. Uh, no big deal, you know, no power, went outside, plugged in the panel to the side, and nothing would happen. And I thought, well, maybe I, you know, kicked a fuse or, because I have an inline fuse on the uh, solar input down here. Checked that, everything was well. I thought, huh, okay, so I was doing some tests. And what happened was is that the uh, BMS would not, uh, give this controller any voltage period it cut itself off it was off so this controller was acting as if there was no battery attached to it so I thought okay well what am I gonna do I went and grabbed the um, the battery charger that I purchased with that battery and literally plugged it in and I thought well maybe if I just gave it a little bit of a juice to trick this into thinking that uh, it was getting power. This would then, in turn, turn itself on and then start putting power into the battery, therefore telling the BMS that it's getting a charge and get this thing started, basically like a jump start. Well, my theory worked. I literally just tapped the positive and negative uh, from the, the uh, outlet charger to this, and it kicked on and started charging and finished charging uh, about three hours later in direct sunlight. So um, now I really got to make sure I get a voltmeter on here or a decent uh, meter so that at least I can take a look and figure out, okay, well, what's the state of this charge uh, for this battery? Um, I've, I've read it's been a challenge with these battery types um, because, you know, think about it. If I, let's say I look and say, oh, okay, my state of charge uh, is X on this and I walk away having things charging it, uh, pulling a, a load off the battery, and it goes overnight and then cuts itself off, and I have no way of jump-starting it. Um, the positive is at least I know, hey, going, you know, leaving it alone, you're getting close, maybe I should shut it off. I could just, you know, the next day plug it in and let it charge. Uh, at least I, I would know. Uh, that's one of the big rubs. There's no indicator here of the state of charge, and then I don't have a meter. Uh, so feedback taken from everybody. Uh, we'll definitely get one uh, on the next build. Again, I'm going to use a different box on this. And then um, we'll go from there, and hopefully we'll get a better uh, better result. So um, I appreciate everybody's feedback, the comments. Hope you like this configuration. Um, you know, there's plenty of options out there. I'm going to take uh, a lot of the feedback I've received from people and do an update, build out a different box, maybe change some loads, uh, put that meter on here. Uh, I have a, a different switch that I want to try. It's a lot smaller, a uh, little push-button switch um, that I'd like to try. Get a little bit tighter seal here. Got some good recommendations on uh, getting rid of these, uh, these bolts because, again, this battery is a lot lighter. I don't need to worry about that weight moving around as much. So I'm going to try a couple of things there. And if I can get rid of the bolts, that's even less weight, less points of entry for moisture. Um, and we'll go from there. So... If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe. I'll be uh, adding some more videos as time permits, and appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thanks.